Hey, what's happening, gamers? Welcome back to your regular Ace Attorney Apollo Justice Trilogy. This is episode 46. Wow. Magical Turnabout goes batty, because there's a bat character in it. Anyway, your first like goes 100 likes, and, uh... That was so funny, I forgot to laugh, Luke! <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you guys for watching the YouTube shorts. Continue to watch the YouTube shorts, because it's helping out tremendously. And, uh, we're ready to go. Tonight's YouTube short will probably be Lego, or maybe it'll be a cat video. Or maybe it'll be, uh, something else you guys found funny. We unlocked Rapunzel to level 2 today, and that's her... Thumbnail. Wow, they only gave you 38 views for that? You worked really hard. That's weird. Oh, it'll... It's just how it's Where's our little... Where's our Wii U pad? The uh, volume's a little louder than it normally is. Yeah, because I can't hear Disney Dreamlight Valley. Hmm. So, Luke and I are both suffering from wounds from our cat. Yeah, Link got me really good. I was basically... Just crawling into bed last night, and I looked down at my ankle, and there was like blood all over it. <laughs> I was like, "What the?" It was like, it's like Link is literally like when we walk by him, he just like lunges. He doesn't just like you know how some cats just like come after you and they swipe at you. That's really not how Link does things. It's more like. He wraps his claws and teeth around your leg and holds on to the point where he's not even on the ground at this point. He's on your leg. Like, his entire body is clawed onto your leg. Yeah, he wraps around you like and a... And you're just like, what, what, what are you doing, Link? Like, why would you do this to me? I'm like, he's literally biting the hand that beats him. That's what's happening. Mm. What day were we on again? Oh, we were here, right? Magical turnabout backstage malice? Is that... Hashtag free trucy. This isn't the first time that trucy's been arrested though, is it? Can can anybody tell this isn't I'm I'm not I awake, so don't remember. This is not the first time Trucy Wright has been on trial, right? Or is it? Because everybody in the uh, Ace Attorney games, whether it's Maya um, I think there's only one character who's never been, like, arrested, and that's Pearls. Because everyone else has been on trial. So, I was telling people today, I got a chance to watch, um, anime with you last night, but I couldn't remember what the anime was about. But I remember the last anime you watched, which was a guy that, or a girl that had seven lives, and one of the lives she married the guy that ended up kept killing her. Mm. Which, she ended up stopping the war, but I don't remember what this anime was that you were watching last night. Oh, it's it's my favorite anime that came out during the pandemic that I, I watch from time to time. Um, Love After World Domination. It's a Super Sentai parody anime um, that involves a, a girl who basically think of it like as the villain's job is... your phone randomly turn on. That was weird. I was talking about the show and the show randomly kicked on. Um, it's a, okay. yeah, it's an, an anime about, um, it's a parody, but the bad guys have a job where they're bad guys and the good guys have a job where they're good guys, but their real day-to-day -day life, they're normal people, and, you know, law-abiding citizens. It's just when it's time to go to work, one group is trying to take over the world and the other group oh, yeah. is fighting them. I vaguely remember that. You said this person's not evil, she just works for an evil organization. Yeah. Thank you, Crossfighter says, uh, it, he was saying, this is the first time she's been arrested. Okay. And Don says, Maya's been arrested, like, three times, I think. Oh, my God. Okay. Thank you, uh, for the super chat, Justo Kenobi says, hashtag free trucy. Thank you, Justo, you're breathtaking. Thank you for the, uh, highlighted message from Shadow Trooper. Says, hi, look at Amber, I enjoy watching you, you both. Have you both thought about playing Star Wars Galactic Battlegrounds since you know you're playing Star Wars? Question mark. Galactic Battlegrounds is a mobile game. I don't know. This is bad. Maybe. Thank you for the highlighted message, Shadow Trooper. And great to see you, everyone. Your Honor, I suggest we put an end to this tragedy now. Give your official ruling and let us offer the victim's soul the last rights it deserves. Hmm. Very well. I suppose I have no other choice. 
My gavel is up. This court finds the defendant Trucy Wright. Objection! What? <gasps> The defense has an objection! Apollo! You, even now you would. I won't give up, and I refuse to let either of them down. Mr. Wright, who's counting on me, and Trucy, who's put all her faith in me. Hmm, Mr. Justice, the fact that you've raised an objection means that you have evidence which, uh, <laughs> sorry, <clears throat> means that you have evidence which to refute the prosecution's claims, correct? Y y yes of course, Your Honor. Do we really have anything, Apollo, at all? Shh. Actually, we do. Oh, uh... There's one piece of evidence, uh, we can present here. Hmm, very well. Mr. Justice, you may proceed. All right, as we saw in the show footage, there's no question that the defendant thrusts a sword into the coffin. The defense doesn't dispute this point. But let us not forget that this was a magic show filled with tricks and illusions. We can't take everything we see at face value. Hmm, so you're saying some sleight of hand was somehow involved? Yes. The defense contends that the sword the defendant used was not the cause of death. Now, what was it Trucy told me she did just before she thrust the sword into the coffin? Very well, let us see your evidence then, Mr. Justice. But remember, you interrupted my verdict to make this claim. You will be severely penalized, oh my gosh, if I find you are bluffing. That's fine, Your Honor. Three strikes? This shows that it's possible that the sword Miss Wright used was not the cause of death. Uh... Three strikes? Oh my gosh. Well, let's see. What could have been the reason... Oh, that was not the cause of death. Mm. I wish we could have asked Trucy if she felt a rubber sword or a metal sword when she was doing it. That would have been in interesting. Um, I would say the sword stand. I mean, that's they, the only the only sword we have. Because that's where they could have switched it, maybe? Or mm. Alright, Luke. Well, at least you saved before. Contains the rubber sword Trucy says she swapped in for the trick. Alright, here we go. This is about to get interesting. No one lives forever. We'll try it. I don't really like that saying. But Sorry. No, I, no, no, no. You know what? No! I won't say this saying anymore because it's kind of disturbing. So, well, here goes nothing. There's my new catchphrase. What? This is bad. You all get three strikes. That's right. We can reload the save. Three strikes. <laughs> Let's go. Take that. What's this, a sword from the show? Uh, yeah, that's right, Your Honor. This is a rubber sword, was in the sword stand understage. Wow, that's a lot of S words. During the trick, Miss Wright was supposed to swap the real sword for a rubber sword. And she told us on the record that she remembers very clearly that she did. I see. So the sword the defendant thrust into the coffin was a rubber one, was it? But then why was the steel sword found lying on the stage? Somebody must have put the steel sword there by swapping it with the rubber one. Just after the incident occurred, the dragon set piece fell and the theater was evacuated. The real culprit must have used the resulting chaos. To swap the rubber sword for the steel one! Do you not know when to give up, stink bug? That is not possible. Blood was found in the coffin hole that the sword was thrust into. It must have been left there when the accused withdrew the sword. This is uncontrivable proof that the sword she used was the steel one. Objection! But that blood could be the result of someone tampering with the crime scene after the fact. 
After the set piece fell and the audience was cleared out of the theater, there was plenty of time for somebody to plant the blood there. Hmm. If the sword of the accused used was a rubber one, then when exactly do you propose the victim was killed? Given that Mr. Rios was alive when he entered the coffin. Objection! Finding the answer to that question precisely is why we need to continue this trial. Yeah, exactly. Let me express my opinion. By all accounts, it is certainly reasonable to suspect the defendant based on the evidence. But as a question of whether the sword the defendant used was a rubber or steel one, I believe further discussion is warranted. I suggest we hear from the defendant herself on this issue. Very well, Your Honor. Yes, I saved it. Somehow. Too close for comfort, but still. My eyes, I can't see. So Everything is all fuzzy. I just feel so out of it. No, no, no. Okay, okay, um, what? The crime, f oh, the crime scene photo was updated, well, okay. The court record. Let's adjourn for a brief 15 minute recess. I advise the prosecution and the defense to use this time to prepare. It's time for my, uh, I don't know what he's gonna do in 15 minutes. What can you do in 15 minutes? You could watch an episode of Teen Titans. That's about it. An episode of Teen Titans is about 15 minutes long. Oh, Teen Titans uh, Go? Yep. Da, 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 da. I could see the judge being a fan of Teen Titans Go. <laughs> he just has one of those personalities. <laughs> oh my. They have a very catchy theme song. It was song. a great episode today. Beast Boy and sang about uh, pie. <laughs> yeah. Woo! That was Harry, Apollo. Tell me about it. We barely made it through by the skin of my teeth. I can't seem crazy about that prosecutor. Sad, mad, saddy either. You know, the way he says let it go and move on as if it's nothing. Like, you Let know. it go and move on, huh? Uh, Whoa, boy. Am I interrupting a secretive conclave of villains or something? Oh, it's this guy. Uh, you mean yourself? Got your next evil scheme in the works already? What do you want, scam artist? I know, right? Hey, keep making that face, champ, and everyone's going to change the channel. <laughs> Look this way, Trucy. Now smile ah! for the camera. Let's see those pearly whites. Isn't that what Grammarie's Creed tells you to do? Punch him in the face, Trucy. Assault! You're already going to jail. You might as well go out by assaulting him. How does it feel, Trucy? <laughs> Everybody online talking about you. They're calling you a real witch out there. Could this be the end of the troop grammary? Go away, you creep! Oh, what is this? Something just changed. Charged into the frame. It looks like a yellow gorilla or something. Could it be Trucy's pit? Filming is prohibited inside the courthouse. Do you want me to get the bailiff? Break his camera. Ah, uh -huh. filming? What are you talking about? I don't even have a camera on me. Huh? What happened to your camera? It just disappeared right before our very eyes. He's a magician. Oh my gosh, you're right. I'll be enjoying the rest of Trucy's show from the gallery. I put a call for Trucy's fans to come and support her earlier, by the way. But I'll get <gasps> uh, some great footage out of them. This is going to be good. Hang loose, baby. Wait, I just had an idea. What if he is that magician? magician? You think he that is, quit. Mr. Ree? Yeah, maybe I mean... he is. Mysterious, mysterious. Maybe he is. Maybe he got somebody else to take the fall for him and pretend to be him and die. Maybe he was the... You're saying he was the original magician and then he killed some imposter? Yeah, like he put somebody in his outfit and then... Interesting. He wanted to frame Trucy because he hated her or something like that. He called in some of Trucy's fans, but for what purpose? I don't know. Apollo! That thing Mr. Uh, Ratings just did, that was some high-level sleight of hand! Huh? Why would he know how to do something like that? Exactly. I don't know. He definitely has some serious magic skills. Hmm. Whoa, this is weird. 
Huh? Link, what's happening at this point? We have a wild Link sighting, guys and gals. Link just... No way, but I thought microphone. she said magicians were all a bunch of good-for-nothings. He said. Maybe he said that to throw us off. Mr. Lawyer, I don't know who that is. Mr. Lawyer! Oh, Mr. that's Lawyer. Bonnie. Hello, Bonnie, how can I help you? Oh, well, there's something that's been really bothering me. Really? What is it? Well, you see... Hey, dummy, what are you whispering to the lobster boy about? Huh? Uh, B -B -B Betty... Who the heck do you think you are? Are you crazy? You want a piece of this? You know you have to talk to me before you say, or say anything, you hair brain. Beep. B -b -b I... Shut your mouth, you dumb bunny. Come with me now. Get over here. <laughs> I wonder what was bothering her. I mean, probably nope, everything. No, 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 you can't go back there. Oh. Link! Hang on, guys. Get out of there! I don't understand why Link's going crazy today. I don't know, but when the cats go back there, they tend to make messes. Okay, sorry. Sorry. All right, I'm ready to continue. Uh, Trucy's We're line. having a catastrophe. Catastrophe in the background, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's no way we're finding that out with Betty constantly hovering her over her like that. Hmm. Court is about to reconvene! <laughs> well, ah, darn it, I became, uh, Southern for a second. <laughs> Will you be alright testifying? <laughs> you did it just what I did yesterday. Yeah, it's just, uh I wonder what Mr. Ratings has up his sleeve. I doubt he's bringing in actual fans. Yeah, probably not. I wonder what he has up his sleeve, too. Better not try anything to get under Trucy's skin right now, of all times. Also, I hate to tell people this, but usually most people, after 10 or 13 years, they tend to age. So if he was the same age as, uh, you know, the other Troop Grammary characters 13 years ago, he'd be much older today. He wouldn't look the same age as the mysterious guy with the mask on his face. Could have yeah. easily gotten somebody who looked exactly like he did when he was, like, a teenager or in his, like, 20s. You know, because he would be in his, like, mid to late 30s now or older. Um, so his, his appearance would change. You're a trucy right. You'll be fine. Hmm. Oh! There goes Apollo with his best uh, trick. That's right. Positive thinking. Whenever I'm feeling down, I always tell myself I'm fine. Hmm. All right. I'll give it a try. I'm Trissy Wright, and I'm fine. Thanks, Polly. I think I can do this now. The one thing I want to know about the Ace Attorney games does... Trucy and Apollo ever find out that they're related? I don't know. That a girl. Good luck up there on the stand. You'll do great. Thanks. I'll be fine. I can do this. All right, Justice. You can do this too. Time to focus on the rest of the trial. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, uh, Don and Ethan. Appreciate that. I don't know. It's just a theory because I. Uh, the fact that they purposely said he has magic training, it's like, well, what could that mean? The only thing I can think of for a motive, I don't, I don't want to, the only thing I can think of for a motive, what would be his motive for hurting Trucy, since she's part of Troop Grammary, but her grandfather was famous in that troop, right? There is, there is a thing, because he hold, she holds the uh, secrets to Troop Grammary. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. I was thinking that, too. Like, maybe her grandfather handed down the secrets, like, secret tricks, and he was angry about that. Like, why would she deserve to have it? Yeah, I think that, um... Maybe I'm wrong about that, but I don't know. I think it wrong. was all about trying to steal the secrets of Troop Grammary. That's all it was. That's stupid. Why would you kill someone over that? Mm, you would kill someone because he doesn't want... He believes that he deserves it. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what people That's do. what I would think. His motive would be, like... I mean, literally, he tried to steal the thing. Can't use it without the key. And other stuff, so... Yeah, you'd have to... 
You'd have to make Trucy... I guess if Trucy went to jail, he would have... Maybe her stuff would be confiscated and he could get it. Yeah. I don't know. Well, it's now and back in session. My episode of Teen Titans Go is wrapped up. It was a good episode. Defendant, please step up to the witness stand, if you would. Trucy Wright, magician. Here comes the liar, deceitful witch. Throw the murderer in jail! Last ever member of that criminal troop. Boo! We don't want to see her in here. That kitty cat. Sorry, Zelda, I didn't mean to squirt you. Order in the gallery! Ah! Order in the gallery! You'll be quiet, or you'll have all be thrown out on the spot. What's with all the hecklers? Mm. It's like Twitter! I bet they're the fans Mr. Ratings invited. What a great A jerk. Well, he's not gonna psych us out. Yeah, they don't seem like fans. Oh, fans of his show. No, then Mr. Knight. Uh, Mr. Knight. Oh, I was like, fans of Trucy? Why would her own fans be booing her? Yeah. Now then, Mr. Knight. This court would like to know if you've switched from the steel sword to the number one on stage. So please testify about this issue. She's going to try and trick us again. Hurry up and convict her already. Give her the death penalty. <laughs> Silence, all of you. I won't tell you again. Mr. Wright, I mean Miss Wright, please uh, feel free to testify. Yes, I'm fine, Your Honor. Trucy, I knew I shouldn't have let her go through with this. Um, I'd like to make a small request. How about instead of testifying with words, I'll show you exactly what happened. Would that be all right, Your Honor? You can witness my stupendous sword switching magic and judge for yourselves. Oh, in spite of everything, she's still smiling. Our Trucy is amazing, isn't she, Apollo? She sure is. She's doing just fine up there. A true entertainer always keeps a smile on their face. She's faithfully following the Troop Grammarie Creed even now. All right, she really is something else. It's showtime for magical girl Trucy Wright. Watch carefully now, everybody. Wow, so she's ex she's showing her little act off. That is stupendous sword switch. Okay, sword switch. She is such a cute character, mm -hmm. to be completely honest. Yeah. She even has a little heart pouch over there. It's kind of cute that she's, like, into magic, even though, like, most... Like, teenagers wouldn't be into that. They'd probably be into something else. Well, she's, she comes from that, you know... Ladies and gentlemen, please focus your attention on the sword. Allow me to demonstrate just how sharp this blade truly is. See that? No tricks or gimmicks. A very sharp sword indeed. Now then, ladies and gentlemen, watch as I take this sword and... Presto Sordo! There, I've switched it. And now. Huh. As you can see, the blade is not steel but rubber! But, 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 but. Bravo, Miss Wright! <clears throat> Whoa! She switched them in a flash! I couldn't see her do it all! She's completely turned the room around! The hecklers are being drowned out by all the cheering, Apollo! Where did the steel sword vanish to, Miss Wright? In order to deepen our understanding of the case, please tell us if you would. I'm not asking out of mere curiosity, it's just, you know... I usually hide the steel sword backstage when I switch them during the show. So when you thrust the rubber sword into the coffin, 
The steel sword wasn't even on stage, but behind the cotton. Exactly! So you see, there is a trick, and give me to it after all! And as for where the steel sword went when I performed the trick just now, it's a secret! Wouldn't want to spoil the magic for you, now would I judge? Oh! Wow, that's our Trucy! Yeah, still. Miss Wright, that part where you spun around, that's an actual part of the sword switching trick you do for the show, right? That's right. The other parts, like the apple, were just to help with my explanation here in court. That's funny. I think I found an inconsistency in her testimony. Hmm. And it looks like I'm not the only one. I don't know what it's doing there. But now I've found it. I've got to get to the bottom of it. Oh, wow. It's going to have to reveal her trick. Now then, Miss Just Mr. Justice, excuse me, you may go ahead and question the witness. Try not to ask dumb questions and spoil this wondrous magic, though. I thought this was supposed to be my cross-examination. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, somebody take the sword away from her. Stupendous sword tr switch. Cross-examination. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please focus your attention on this sword. Hold it. Please be careful, Miss Wright. Don't worry. I've practiced this trick a thousand times, Apollo. That's right, Apollo. You have to give Trucy some credit. She knows what she's doing. I know, I know, but it still makes me nervous every time. But that's what magic is all about. A truly great magician can make her audience experience all kinds of thrills and chills. I guess you're right. I'd better try not to interrupt her too much while she's doing the trick. I don't want to distract her to break her concentration. And now, ladies and gentlemen, back to the exciting world of magic! Allow me to demonstrate just how sharp this blade truly is. M Miss Wright, uh, please don't swing that big dangerous thing around. Somebody could get hurt. Apollo, please don't shout when I'm swinging said blade around. Somebody could get hurt. Oh, <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. I couldn't help myself. Huh. You should know better than to talk to me when I'm on stage. Mr. Justice, I'll see you in my chambers after the court is adjourned. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, I don't suppose somebody could make me disappear before that happens. <laughs> He's in trouble. Let's just watch quietly, shall we, Apollo? As a boy, I enjoyed watching magic tricks, and you're ruining it! <laughs> and now, back to the show. But we're supposed to... Per you can keep... Yeah, I would keep pressing it. It'll just keep getting in trouble. See that? No gimmicks or tricks. A oh, very sharp sword indeed. Oh. So it's definitely a real sword, right? Now, now, Apollo. I know you're excited, but you have to control yourself. Mr. Justice, if you needlessly interrupt this wonderful magic show again... I will be forced to bring my very real gavel down on your head. Oh my gosh. The judge seems to be completely taken in by Trucy's magic show, Apollo. Yeah, it's like she's cast a magic spell over him and the audience. I better not interrupt her anymore. There's no telling what the judge might do to me. <laughs> nope, we're going to keep interrupting. I want to see Ms. what Knight, happens. Miss Knight, please ignore any further outbursts from Mr. Justice. And proceed with your spectacular trick. All righty, Judge. Here I go then again. I'm going to interrupt again. Now then, ladies and gentlemen, watch as I take this sword and... Hold it! Oh! Oops! I did it again! I've had it up to here, Apollo! Can't you listen quietly like a big boy? <laughs> Sorry about that. I got a little too worked up. Apollo! Now, boys and girls, watch carefully and please don't kick 
the seat in front of you. I will now take this sword and... Presto! Sword There! I have switched it! I didn't even see her do it. I know. So you switched the swords when you spun around just now? That's right. It's the same way I do the trick in the actual magic show, too. But I'm also doing a lot of extra things that I can't... I don't do during the show right now, though. The key point is the sword switching, Apollo. If only we could prove she did it during the actual show, too. Right. Prove that she switched them during the show. Hmm. What's the matter, Apollo? You look troubled. Oh, it's nothing. Uh-oh. This is quite the pickle. How should I go about handling this? Miss Wright, please continue with your wonderful trick. So you've all witnessed me switching the sword. Thank you, Judge. And now... Well, watch out! Yeek! What do you think you're doing, Apollo? But you were putting yourself in danger. I couldn't just stand by and not say something. Mr. Justice, you're putting your head in danger of meeting my gavel. <laughs> oh, Apollo, you better apologize before you become this case's next victim. I'm very sorry, everyone. <laughs> How did it come to this? All right, boys and girls. If you want to ask for an encore, wait until the end, all right? Now then. My sword was sharp as steel just a moment ago, but... As you can now see, the blade is not steel, but rubber! Oh. Wow, that's incredible! When in the world did you switch them? Huh, but I explained it once already. Um, could you show it to me again? Sure! But remember, a magician doesn't usually share a secret. So this is a very ex special exception, Apollo. And I'm very grateful for your generosity, believe me. I better take a good hard look at the instant she switches the swords. Even though she explained how she does it, I still can't see her do it, Apollo. It blows me away no matter how many times I watch. Yeah, me too, but... What is it, Apollo? Mm, did you notice anything about the way Trucy moves during the trick? You mean like her movements? I don't get it. What's the real story, Trucy? I don't understand. So she's lying about how she does the trick, I think. Because she doesn't want people to know how she does it, I think. Uh, There's the apple. There's the sword. I'm very sharp. Alright. Um, okay, so they said focus on when she's switching it. Remember, they said that There's... focus on when she's switching it. She just spun around just like that. Um, do we have anything to present on there when she... Yeah, let's see if we can present something here. Let's see what we have in the court record. Okay. That could be... That could, like, contradict it or, like, ask her a question about it. Like, maybe there's a video... Uh, like a, a picture or a video or uh, some kind of written record of how she does the trick on stage. Hmm. Um. A disc was recorded at Trucy's escape trick. What about her trick for the. Well, that's the. Okay, there is. There's Mr. Hat. There's Bonnie. <laughs> And you can't see her switch because there's fog. Oh. So she would need fog to do the trick. So you generally she'd need fog. Trucy is so cute. Oh, 
Oh, wow. That was the... She looks scared, too. It doesn't look like the look of someone who committed murder. All right, so... Yeah, I think... guess present it and see what happens. I don't know. Okay, show footage. That's the only footage we have of her doing the trick, unfortunately. I think if Trucy was there in real life, she'd be stressed out seeing that. Objection! Miss Wright, there's something I'd like to confirm with you. What is it, Apollo? There seems to be a dis uh disrep ah uh, discrepancy ah Dis discrepancy Apollo? Yeah, that. There seems to be a discrepancy between the way you performed the trick just now and the way it appears in the show footage. Uh, what? But that can't be. I performed it exactly the same way both times. Then what's going on here? Miss Wright, I have the show footage right here. And the part where you twirl your cape around is missing from it. What? But I did it! So... It really is the exact moment you switched the swords? Yes, that's right! I knew it! <sighs> well, I certainly never expected the defense to expose the accused lie for me. Mr. Justice, does this mean that you are arguing that the defendant did not swap the swords during the magical show? Uh, no, Your Honor. That wasn't my intention. I mean... I did swap them! I know I did, Apollo! I'm absolutely sure of it! Uh. Human memory is unreliable at best, but in this case, I'm afraid that it's the witness herself who cannot be trusted. We can see the footage for ourselves. The claim of this witness is our false. But, but, but... Now, that it's been proven that the accused did not swap the swords, it means that the use of a steel sword to pierce the coffin was wholly intentional. Gurk! And by the way, was it not you, Mr. Justice, who argued that Mr. Rhea's death was not an accident but murder? I assume you have no objections to that still. It was, after all, your assertion. The defense, um... Objection! The defense has an objection! To you, Mr. Apollo Justice! I demand you withdraw the discrepancy you pointed out now! But there is a discrepancy and it must mean something, I'm sure of it! Huh! Would the defense team kindly save their spot until after court is adjourned? Now, after all this debate, it seems we've come back around to the original argument. The defendant knew about the prank plan that would place the victim inside the coffin. What's more, the defendant did not perform the sword-switching trick on stage. Through her actions, I'm afraid that I've come to see the true intentions of the accused. Her murderous intentions. It is such a shame. But... but... I did switch the swords, I swear. You're knee-deep in it now, Justice. Wow, Apollo, you're making Crucy look like she's a murderer. <sighs> Some defense attorney. Hold it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's see, you are, um, which one are you again? Benny? No, that's not right. Bon Bon! Body! It's Bonnie, Your Honor. You were mixing the two names together, Your Honor. Oh, pardon me. And uh, do you have something you wish to say, Bonnie? Yes, Your Honor. I'd like to testify. About what? The more I think about it, the less possible it seems. I don't believe Trissy killed Mr. Rias. Bonnie? Hold it! Hey, what's the big idea? Such an incredibly gifted and talented magician would never commit murder. I refuse to believe it. What are you talking about, you hair brain hair? You keep your trap shut, you hear, Bonnie? And she's Western again. Think Harley Quinn, Ambie. <laughs> Why is it hard for me to do that? I don't know. Oh, I... Darn it! You've got like Eliza Doolittle stuck in your head. I am not good with accents. 
Oh, I got a... I got a bag of baby carrots for you, Sue. So... This is not working out. Oh, my God. Oh, I got a... Oh, darn it. I don't know how to do this. I got a... Oh, I got a bag of baby carrots for you, so chew on those and bite down, will ya? This is the best that I have, Luke. This is the best. Um, why does your hexen keep changing, Betty? No, I won't be quiet. What's the matter with you? Didn't you hear me? Yeah, there you go. Uh, Tracy said something to me once. Betty. Huh? She said no matter how scared you get, no matter how mean people are to you, you can't give in or give up. That's what being a professional magician is all about. Isn't that right, Jersey? Isn't it? Oh, th that's right, Bonnie. I've always been afraid to stand up to Betty, afraid to defy her. So I did what she said. But when I saw Trucy today, she gave me strength. She's just going to try and trick us. Hurry up and convict her. Give her the death penalty. Ha ha ha. Um, I'd like to make a small request. About instead of, how about instead of testifying with my words? I'll show you exactly what happened. Would that be alright, your honor? You can witness my stupendous sword switching magic and judge for yourselves. Seeing her courage, the way she kept smiling, despite everything, she's just incredible. So I'm not gonna run away. I am scared, but for once, I'm going to be brave. Ugh, what have you done to my sister, Trucy? Right? You practically brainwashed her! It's the power of Trucy's conviction. That's what it is. It's touched Bonnie's heart. Yeah, Trucy really is one magical girl. Bonnie, is the topic of your testimony related to the thing that's bothering you? The thing you tried to tell us about in the lobby during the recess? Yes. Ever since I saw the show footage, something's been nagging at me. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but something is off. I feel like something about it is different from what I saw on stage. What do you mean by that, Bonnie? I wonder if what was shown on TV is really the same as what happened on stage. <gasps> what do you mean? Of course it is. The show has been performed once after all. They could have edited it. It can't show anything other than what happened on that stage yesterday. Yes, they could. Attention. They could edit it. But Bonnie's testimony deserves our attention. We have to examine the show footage. Hmm, but what can we check it against? Do you have uh, some other footage of the show? Well... I have some show footage. You do? One of the TV station's cameramen said he was a fan of mine. He kept his camera on me throughout the entire show. And then afterwards, he gave me the footage he shot as a present. He did? To tell you the truth, I thought it was kind of creepy. So I was actually about to get rid of it, but... Hold it! That is kind of creepy. P -p Please submit that video footage to the court! I guess he was just your really big fan, Bonnie. Hmm, now then. Let's take a look at this new footage. <laughs> He's filming her the entire time. <laughs> ah! Wow! Oh my gosh! Yeah, why would he submit this to Bonnie? Why would he give this footage to her? So...
So Trucy should be on the other side there. Wait, that's what actually... Oh, then she was scared when she saw the victim. Yeah, but we can't see anything other than him zooming in on Trucy. Or, uh... Wow, okay then. That's, um... <laughs> oh my god. That's very, um, sexual harassment footage. You really did keep the camera on Bonnie's, um... Uh, anatomy, didn't he? The whole time. <laughs> I think the cameraman really needs to keep his personal feelings out of his work at this point. It appears that um, he likes to look over the rabbit girl. Well, Defense, do you still believe this new show footage is worth uh, inspecting? Oh my god. Of course I do. Let's watch it again. Okay, how are we going to go about this, Apollo? I mean... Let's try comparing the two. We might just find an inconsistency between them. <laughs> yeah, where was he filming from exactly, Macho? An inconsistency, huh? Yeah, the two pieces of footage are of the same scene, so they should match up. But Bonnie felt there was something off about the original footage. So if we... Oh, sorry. So if we can pick out what's different between the two... We'll know what Bonnie found on stage! Exactly. Plus, we may figure out why the original doesn't show the sword switching trick. Your Honor, the defense would like to compare these two pieces of show footage. Hmm, we'll need two televisions for this. Very well, I'll allow it. What a waste of time. Apollo, do you know how to compare the two pieces of footage? Nope, I've never done it before. I'll give you a little lesson then! I'll use the video player's buttons to go through the footage. Then, when you want to speed through, use the fast forward zero button. Or, oh, if you want to go back, use the rewind button or square. Uh, and those are the buttons on the PlayStation controller, if you didn't know. Thank you for over-explaining that, Athena. I don't even know how you would examine both tapes like that. You would have to find a way of editing them together. <clears throat> I have no idea. Okay. If you want to halt the playback, just use the pause button, X. Oh, and by the way, if you fast-forward or rewind, then the playback is when the playback is paused. This is extremely complex, Athena. You can do a slow frame-by-frame -frame playback. How do we fast-forward when it's paused? All right, and uh, how do I switch between the two videos? Just use the switch camera button, L1. Now you're going to need a college degree just to do this one part of the video. Can't we just have them, like, be around at the same time? Now if you find it footage... <laughs> Oh my gosh. Put the cursor over what's different and then press triangle to present it to the court. Thanks, Athena. You really know your stuff. I can't even remember what I just said. Not really. I just gave some gusto and then went with my gut on most of it. I'm not even sure if I explained it correctly. Probably not, no. <sighs> hmm? Well, oh, this is happening. <laughs> What? I sure hope she guessed right. Anyway, let's give it a try. I mean, it'd be so much easier to have them both, like, play simultaneously, but, uh, whatever. I know, we should be able to find two TVs. Well, she's doing that. She's kissing him. He's going over here. The sword guy. Wow. Wow, just wow. Just... There's cards. There's cards? There's cards. And then in the other footage, is there cards or...? That's weird. Which one is the real one? The real one is the one, the creepy one is the actual real one. Where's the one. cards? Not an edited one. 
Yeah, the, unfortunately the weird creepy one is the one that's actually the only real footage we have. The other one is possibly edited. <coughs> Where are the cards? Uh, there. And if we switch to the other one, there's no... No cards. No cards. <clears throat> That's also weird because... Who has the sword there? I don't even see Trucy here. The sword is in there. The Trucy isn't even here. I'm so confused. What's happening? No, he was too, uh... <laughs> too busy filming tail. Uh... Mm. There's no card. It's the same scene. Where are the cards? Why would the guy... Why would the cameraman give her this? Why? The fact that she was like, this was so creepy, I was about to get rid of it. <laughs> I mean, I can understand. Um... <clears throat> Alright, well, I guess you could try to present those cards. There's people in the chat saying stuff about cards as well. I don't know how to present the cards, though. Just click on just click on that card that's sitting there, I think. And then you can just present as the a triangle button, maybe. I mean, sweetheart. Oh. Mm. Yeah, but I can't present when it's paused. I don't think. Maybe I can. Yeah, I think you can. Okay. Because it has the triangle button available. There. Oh, you're right. Take that! <clears throat> Good job. It's right there! The bunny's tail! I mean... Um... Cards! <laughs> the only thing we could see was... It was hard to see the footage of that! <sighs> I guess you could say that the cameraman really wanted to get some tail. Alright, well let's move- moving on, Apollo. Because he kept filming her tail. Maybe he was just in that part of the stage. I don't know. It's right there! Let's go for it! Present card! I mean... It's right there! Take a good look at the scene and compare it again! <laughs> I don't want to watch it again. Please, no more watching that. For all that beautiful footage! No! We have to stand at a butt again? I mean, the playing cards don't appear in the video shot from the front! Hey, you're right! What's going on here? Miss Wright, what can you tell us about these playing cards? Oh! Those! They're the cards that I throw when I do the sword switching trick! What? Mr. Justice, does this mean? Yes, it means that the sword switching trick was cut from the TV show footage. So the footage was edited out? Yeah, with malice intent. That is absurd. Well, we must get to the bottom of this right away. Ha! See what I did there? Wow. Bailiff, the TV station might still have the unedited footage. Go see what you can find. Shame on you, Judge. Yes, your honor. Shame. Poor shame. <laughs> Get to the bottom of this. Uh... <clears throat> it's you! Creepy man. Now, hold on, Your Honor. This is all just a big misunderstanding, believe you me. Give a guy a chance to defend himself before you start pointing fingers. And who might you be? Right, right. Sorry about that. Got ahead of myself there. Here is my business card. Charmed to make your acquaintance, Your Honor. Oh, well, I am very polite of you. It's lovely to meet you. Too, Prosecutor Sadie. Please take my card. A business card. Ah, yes. I read about this custom among businessmen in this country. It's not a custom in, in America. I know, right? I've even familiarized myself with the various replies. 
how do you do, good sir? Or, what's cracking, homie, for example? Oh, you're from Take Two TV, are you, witness? Come to think of it, I believe I've seen you on television before. Yes, Roger Ratings, otherwise known as Ratings Raja. He is a TV producer and appears on many of the... Uh, ah! He's a television producer and appears on many of his own t shows as of late. He's best known for his catchphrases, Hang Loose Baby. My, so you are Ratings Raja! Hang Loose Baby, Judge. Nice courtroom you've got here. I never thought I'd get to meet you in person. But Prosecutor Sadi, how do you know such, so much about him? In preparation for the case, I watched all of his shows. I found Ratings Raja goes to Burger Barn of particular interest. It inspired me to visit that restaurant straight away to learn more about the logical cuisine. What? You went to Burger Barn? Who would have thought... You must really want to try it, huh? Because that's lying. Woo! Compared to my aesthetic training, an hour's wait is nothing. I recommend the Southwestern Burger with Jalapeno Jack Cheese, by the way. I'm having a really hard time picturing him in line for burgers. Ahem. <clears throat> Prosecutor Sadi, unexpected enthusiasm for food aside... Mr. Ratings, what is this misunderstanding you mentioned? Well, for starters, it is true that the footage was edited. Wow. You'll get your hands on this anyway, so I might as well show you the unedited footage. It is pretty long video, so I will just show you the part with the playing cards. You can see the cards when Trucy spins around, so keep your eyes peeled. Um, what? Yeah, but it proves that she spun around. Yep. So that's a real sword, it looks like, to me. I feel like he still edited that version. Did you see the part that was cut where Trucy switched swords? She spins around and the playing cards go flying. Everything's like it's supposed to be. Hmm, then it seems the defendant really did swap swords during the trick. Which means the sword Miss Wright thrust into the coffin was the rubber one. In other words, Miss Wright couldn't have killed Mr. Rias. Yeah, see, that is the first Mr. Understanding right there. Huh? What do you mean? Well, Trucy definitely did swap swords, as you saw. So yeah, maybe she didn't kill Mr. Rias when she stabbed the coffin. But that means he was killed after he showed up pretending to be a corpse. What? So you're saying that up until that point, everything was going according to the script? If that's true, then when and how exactly do you think he was killed? It was after the dragon set piece came crashing down. I say Trucy murdered Mr. Rios when she was hidden from view behind the set piece. Why? She ran off stage. She could have easily done it behind that huge dragon that everybody... W no one would be the wiser. She has no motive to do anything like that. It doesn't even make any sense. Hmm, I see. Indeed, there is a ring of truth to your assertion. You bet. Plus, there is a specious-looking shadow in the footage, too. It is toward the end of the footage just before the dragon hits the stage. It might be easier to see it for yourself. You mean yourself? I mean, I would the have just... The fact that she looks so surprised. Why would she act surprised? It's only for a split second, so it is hard to check out there. The suspicious shadow must be Trucy. It's Mr. Hat. <clears throat> She's using the steel sword she hid behind the curtain trick to kill the victim. But how could Mr. Hat, who's an inanimate mm, object... Now that you mention it, I suppose it does look that way. Objection! Oh, somebody else used Mr. Hat. This witness is trying to ram his theory down our throats, Your Honor. And that's not all. Aren't we forgetting that the witness willfully edited the sword footage out? Exactly. You see, there's your second misunderstanding right there. 
Your Honor, would you mind if I testified about it? I've seen people testify on TV, and I've always wanted to give it a shot. That would be fine with me, Prosecutor Sadie. This is quite unexpected. It threatens to disrupt the karmic course of this case. Hey, lighten up, pretty boy. You're gonna like what I got to say, promise. Hmm. Very well. However, if you do anything to impede the last rites of the victim, I will have you removed. All right, with Prosecutor Sadie's permission, please give your testimony, Mr. Ratings. Roger Ratings, the Ratings Raja, now Kaiser of the courtroom. Hehe, <laughs> I'm taking over the floor, so listen up, loyal viewers. Honestly, his shirt is super ridiculous looking. And, like, he's wearing shorts with a, like, shirt with, like, frills all over it. Why does he have, it looks like he has dollar bills in his pocket. And a gold chain. Who is this guy? What a weirdo. He's very strange. Okay, so we're gonna say it was on purpose. He's like a, ja a shady Japanese host. Footage is meant to be edited, I tell you. Scenes are spliced together and long for boring scenes are cut out. All these stations edit footage this way. It wasn't like it was done malicious maliciously or something. It was just a coincidence that particular scene was cut. It wasn't intentional. Yeah, right. Or what? You got some proof that I had an anterior motive for editing footage? Obviously, because the way you edited it made her seem like a murderer. I see. So you're saying it was a coincidence that a sword-swapping <clears throat> scene was cut? How convenient. That's right. Glad you got the picture. Objection! Coincidence? Just... That's a little too convenient, if you ask me. Exactly. Oh, an objection. How cool. It sure packs a lot of punch when you hear it live. Do that again. I want to get another shot from a different angle. My objection is not for your entertainment. And cut. There. I got some good stuff there. Wow. Mr. Ratings, filming is prohibited inside the courthouse. Whoops. My bad, Judge. If the defense has an issue, it can point it out during the cross-examination. Cross-examination. Hmm. It was deliberate. It wasn't deliberate, I tell you. Mm -mm. Slip of the tongue there. The footage is meant to be edited. Hold it. Really? I've never heard anybody say that. It's common knowledge in the TV world. Wow. You get any idea what the snooze crews would be to watch a magic show without editing? Um, people watch a it. A magic show like that one, anyway. That was ice cold. People watch it live, though, on stage. Anyway, editing is what makes <clears throat> TV worth watching. Editing just cuts out the boring stuff to make it more um, yeah. string together. You're not supposed to cut out actual parts of the show, like when she twirls around. Mm hmm. Scenes are spliced together and long, boring scenes are cut out. Hold it. Are you saying that you thought they were boring scenes in Miss Wright's magic show? You gotta ask the script and presentation deserve a place on the cutting room floor. Broadcasting that mess as is would have been a complete disaster. That is why I had to edit the footage. It's just what a TV man does. What didn't you like about the show exactly? The whole thing, it was a major snooze fest. Maybe common folk like you don't get it. But the show's only as good as a how loud and flashy and trashy it is. It was plenty loud and flashy on its own. All you did was add the trash. I know, right? I suppose each industry has its own way of doing things. Just as we in the legal profession focus exclusively on evidence and testimony. Exactly. Whether it is showbiz or legal biz, what do you... Uh, we do what we got to do to get the job done. Anyway, editing footage is just a matter of course in the TV industry. Hmm. All these stations edit footage this way. It wasn't like it was done maliciously. It. It, was. it wasn't done maliciously, huh? But I get the distinct impression that you bear feelings of ill will. Bleh. But I get the... <laughs> 
But I... Ah, there is no but. That you bear feelings of ill will toward Troop Grammary. <gasps> huh? What makes you think that? The things that you yourself have said. You'll see. I'll dig up the dirt and expose the dark heart behind the sweet smile. I'll prove those Grammary magicians are all a bunch of lowlifes. Yeah, exactly. Why would he say that randomly? And I also get the impression that you felt that way for a long time. Oh, wow. Words are... Words such as those can't be interpreted in many... Words such as these can be interpreted in many different ways. For example, though, I bear the defense no ill will. I would not hesitate to say that he is a good-for-nothing lout of a lawyer. You bear me no ill will? Could, could have fooled me. I know, right? And yet, it is the truth. I only... I am only strict on you as it seems you have strayed from the path. What? If you say any objections, Mr. Justice, please make your case with evidence in the future. Mr. Ratings, please continue with your testimony. <laughs> wow, why is he always going hard on us? It was just mm -hmm. a coincidence that particular scene was cut. It wasn't intentional. Yeah, right. Of all the scenes you could have cut, why the sword switching trick? That seems like too much of a coincidence to me. Oh, so now you're going to tell me how I'm supposed to edit my programs, Big Shot? It's hard being boss, kid. You got to make the tough choices. Like, content gets cut and which does not. Let me ask you this. Why exactly did you make such tough choice in this case? You wouldn't understand, chap. It's all about artistic vision. Let me use my phone. I tell you, people tell you how to do your job when they don't know the first thing about it. Yeah, right. I may not know TV, but I know evidence, law, and boy do I have some for you, champ. You do? I might not be able to show that your selective editing was intentional. However, I know you bear the defendant ill will, and this is the evidence that proves it. The clipboard, maybe? Yeah, that's what I would say. The fact that he used a faulty clipboard, it, it proves. It proves he was trying to trick her. I knew that clipboard would come in handy. Why would he try to trick her unless he bears her ill will? <clears throat> hey. Alright, let's do the clipboard. Mm -hmm. Huh? What is that you got there? This is the contract you had Miss Wright sign just before the magic show. This contract between the first party Take-Two TV and the second party Miss Wright reads, If, through the fault of the second party, the show must be canceled in part or in full, the second party will pay three million dollars as compensation to the first party. Three million dollars?! That's a completely unreasonable sum. Yep. I couldn't agree more, and of course, Miss Wright doesn't have that kind of money. Nevertheless, Roger Ratings had her sign this unreasonable contract anyway. <clears throat> or more accurately, he conned her into signing it. Conned her? How did he do that? With a clipboard, Judge. There's a trick to the clipboard that was used by Miss Wright to sign her contract. It houses carbon paper that can secretly copy her signature onto other documents. Oh, come on now. That's quite a nasty accusation you're slinging my way. For starters, you don't have any proof I had anything to do with the carbon paper stuff. It was your contract. Just because Trucy and her agency can't pay up, that doesn't mean I can't her. Wow. Mm, but the three million dollars... That's totally out of reach for the average person. Thank you, Judge. In any case, this is an important new information. Please add it to your testimony, Mr. Ratings. Yeah, exactly. Where's your proof linking me to that tricked-out clipboard? You don't have any, do you? Uh... We do have proof. Hold it. I think we have that other thing that was... This clipboard is yours, isn't it, Mr. Ratings? Well, it belongs to the TV station anyway, that much I know. Maybe it was an old prop from one of our TV shows that got used by mistake. What? Or maybe you used it on purpose to con Miss Wright. By mistake, you'd have to have the papers in there. Mr. Ratings has already stated that he did not. 
Mr. Justice, please do not use this trial to try to get out of paying your agency's debt. That's not what I'm doing! Hmm, proof Mr. Ratings is connected to the carbon paper, huh? If Trucy's signature was copied onto the fake contract, there must be an original contract that Trucy actually did sign. True, but I bet Ratings is too savvy to leave something like that behind his evidence. But what if her signature was copied onto more than just the fake contract? Like a third document with Trucy's signature on it? Have you we seen anything like that, though, Apollo? Hey, what are you guys whispering about? Let me continue my testimony. No, I don't want you to continue, jerk. Or what? You have some proof that I hid an ulterior motive for editing that footage? Mm. Where's your proof linking me to the trick contract clipboard? Present the other contract. Trucy's note. A note found in the dressing room uh, after the incident bears Trucy's signature. Yeah, there you go. Objection! I don't think so, Slimeball. You must be quite the con man if you can fool a magician with a simple trick. But if you think you can con a lawyer, you're very mistaken. Hey, kid, would it kill you to enunciate in front of the camera? Wow. You know, like how a newscaster think of the viewers. I'd like you to take a look at Miss Wright's signature here on this note. Now, let's compare that signature to the one here on this contract. It's exactly the same. Well, would you look at that? That's exactly the same. It's a carbon copy. That's right. Your Honor, not just similar, but exactly the same. Nobody can sign their name in exactly the same way twice, unless it's a copy. These signatures are proof positive that you conned Miss Wright. And they definitely prove your malicious intent! Say, not bad, lawyer guy. Didn't know you had it in you. This is really getting interesting now. To get great ratings for sure! Don't try to dodge the issue, Mr. Ratings. The fact is that you bear ill will against my client. The show footage was definitely edited with malice intentions, isn't that right? What a forced argument defense. All you have really proven is not his ill will towards Miss Wright, but his... Uh, Pecuniary greed? But his greed. It's right, I just wanted money, baby. Fat stacks of cheddar, that's all. After all, I'd never even crossed paths with Trucy before this magic show. So I'd have absolutely zero reason to bear her ill will, right? Never crossed paths with her before? He didn't bear any ill will, huh? Fat chance. This guy definitely has some major hate for Trucy. Yeah, he said something horrible about her. You'll see. I'll dig up the dirt and expose the dark heart behind the sweet smile. I'll prove those grammary magicians are all a bunch of lowlifes. He's the original, um, Mr. Rius, I think. He has to be. It has to be. Why does he have all this, uh, ill will toward them? How would he know Trucy otherwise? Mm -hmm. Then who's the guy who ended up dead? I can't prove it with anything, but the things he said all point to the fact. There must be something between the two of them that gave birth to this grudge. Some sort of connection that not even Trucy is aware of. Your Honor! I'd like to argue that Roger Rents and Trucy Wright must have crossed paths before. There must be some hidden connection between them. Hidden connection? Connection? What is it now? Just what are you getting at, Mr. Justice? It is futile to even ask, Your Honor. Surely it's just another one of the defense's feckless claims. Objection! No, I don't think so. You don't seem to have a very high opinion of me, but once you hear my argument, you'll wish you'd taken me a whole lot more seriously. Will I really? Very well, then. Do proceed. Did you figure something out, Apollo? Nope, not a thing. What? That was just some good old-fashioned bluffing, courtesy of Mr. Wright's fine training. I hope you know what you're doing, Apollo! I feel like you're bluffing. If you're gonna make such a bold claim, Mr. Justice, I hope you're ready to elaborate. 
What is this hidden connection between the defendant and Raja ratings? They're dating! Mm, oh. <laughs> ha! Are you gonna put that? I think I wanna do that one, yes. Alright. I wanna do that one. <laughs> Alright then. I mean, let's go for it. <laughs> oh no. I don't even like to imagine this, but could it be possible that the two of them are dating? <laughs> if Mr. Ratings and Miss Wright were in a relationship... Oh, that's good, yes! Viewers love a secret romance to dish out. Yes, Trucy, I love each other so much! She's gonna introduce me to her father sometime real soon! Objection! Trucy would never fall for a guy like you in a million years! Yeah! Mr. Justice, are you aware that you're objecting to your own argument? <laughs> I'm sorry, Your Honor, but when I saw Mr. Rent's tactics, I just had to speak out. Creepy. Mm, personally, I can't say that I blame you for wanting to do that, but you're the one who came up with such a disturbing idea in the first place! <laughs> Penalty! What was I even thinking? That all I ended up doing is grossing everyone out. Oh. Now I need to, like... Rinse out my eyes with bleach. <laughs> now, why won't you try again, Mr. Justice? Oh my god. What is the hidden connection between the defendant and the other one? They, he has to be a magician because he said he had sleight of hand. That sleight of hand trick Mr. Rent's uh, ratings did during the recess earlier. Hmm. Filming is prohibited inside the courthouse! Do you want me to get the bailiff? Oh. Ah, filming? What are you talking about? I don't have a camera on me. <gasps> oh. What if Mr. Rents is a magician too? What if? I believe it's up to the defense to fill in the blanks, not me. Well, if he is, he may have had some contact with Miss Wright somewhere along the way. <sighs> Your argument is hardly worth responding to. But by all means, please do continue. As a passage in the sacred scriptures of Cornarianism states, he who gives a sermon to a monkey is himself a monkey. Yes, it doesn't matter what you say to a dimwit, he isn't going to get it anyway. But we saw Mr. Rents perform a magic trick. He made his video camera disappear in the blink of an eye. Well, I think it would be pretty funny if I were a magician. You must have been seeing things. Want me to introduce you to a good eye doctor? Wow. If a connection as tenuous as that is all it takes, then every magician in the country would potentially bear ill will toward the accused. Oh. Um. I uh, guess you're right. You're not the sharpest knife in the drawer, are you, short stuff? You would do well to cleanse that putrid mind of yours in the holy waters of Mount Popples. <laughs> Three days under a frigid waterfall, and even you should rise to the level of a monkey. Oh. Aha! Numbskull for a numbskull! Ah! Oh, well, this numbskull has a trick, but at least I'm not a tank beetle anymore. I think I get what they're driving at, Apollo. They're saying you're dumb! I mean, even if he is a magician, it's not exactly a reason to bear a grudge against Trucy, is it? Hmm, I wonder what his grudge could be. Uh, 18. Mag yes. Magician. Whoops. There we go. Alright, here we go. Sleight of hand. Ah. Hold on. I think I can think of one person. One magician who has a reason to bear a grudge against Trucy. Or rather, one magician who has a reason to bear a grudge against Troop Grammary. Oh? No. No way! Nani? There's something wrong, Mr. Justice. I, Your Honor, the defense wishes to submit evidence at this time. I see, and what sort of evidence do you have for us? Evidence that points to the real killer, the one who had a motive to commit this crime. What? <sighs> And what have you come up with this time, Defense? 
Trucy Wright is the sole heir to Troop Grammarie and its name. This puts her square in the crosshairs of one particular magician. And this piece of evidence points to that one person with a grudge against Miss Wright. Um, somebody in Troop Grammarie. I, I guess it is uh, the poster. Yeah, I guess so. It has to be. It's showing that somebody was... It even has him... It says it over his name, it says cancelled. Mm -hmm. So obviously, like... Obviously, like, he got cut from the team for some reason. Maybe he was terrible at his job. I don't know. Take that! And who exactly are you naming, Mr. Justice? The one who's cancelled. Thirteen years ago, the great Mr. Rius belonged to Troop Grammarie. But then the troop ousted him, and Mr. Rius vowed to get revenge on them someday. And what better way to accomplish then that than through ruination, than through ruination of their sole heir? But Mr. Rius is the victim, Mr. Justice. You named a dead man as your suspect. But is he really dead? What? What do you mean, is he really dead? If the fact that Mr. Rius is the victim is what's throwing you off, then how about we consider this possibility? What if the man who died on that stage yesterday wasn't Mr. Rius? Well, what? You mean the victim was an imposter? Not mysterious? Then what about the real mysterious? I'm getting to that. It would mean that the real one is still alive. That's absurd. Mm. But then who died? Or maybe he pretended to die. Do we even have the body? Yeah, we have the body. Oh. Mr. Justice, who is the real Mr. Rias if not the victim of this case? It's all coming together now. I finally see the gimmick, the trick to this entire case. This should explain everything, Your Honor. The real killer, the one who hated Troop Grammary and wanted to sully its name... The magician lurking in the shadows who set up a fake Mr. Rius in his stead. The real Mr. Rius is... You! Roger Ratings! Take that! But that's... Yes, it is. Roger Ratings is the real Mr. Rius! What? <gasps> Him? I mean, he's wearing green. Objection. I'm just saying. Oh, holy red pepper. Oh, hollow red pepper. Your impotent seeds sprout not but meaningless empty words. You can't possibly have proof to support such an outlandish theory. It is not a bad idea for a soap opera. But not even diehard fans of the genre would stick around past the pilot. Wow. You want proof? Well, I've got proof. I can prove it by... Come on, Apollo. Proving that the Mysterious in yesterday's magic show was a fake. And to do that... I just need you to look at this spot on the poster. Oh, he has... Oh, his thing... A scar on his arm. Ah. Look at that huge scar. Yeah. He has a huge scar on his arm. There's no I bet I bet him in the video does not have that scar. Take that. This is the injury Mr. Ria sustained while practicing a magic trick 13 years ago. However. <gasps> oh my gosh! The video the victim shot of himself has no trace of that injury. My, you're absolutely right! Now, Mr. Ratings, what do you suppose we'd find if we look at your right forearm? <gasps> Is there any by chance a nasty 13-year-old scar under the sleeve of yours? Oh, show us your arm, dude! Show us! 
Well, Mr. Ratings, why don't you roll up your sleeves and let the court have a look? Or are you hiding something else up there? I'm ready for this. Do it! <laughs> Come on now, I have nothing up my sleeve. I don't need to hide anything up there because I require no tricks or gimmicks. For you see, my magic is the real deal. Then why do you always wear long sleeves? Dude, you have the scar. This is what you were hoping to see. Oh! There it is! The scar! Um. Just as I thought. It's right. I am the forgotten magician abandoned by the Dark Age understage of history. The Great Mysterious. Oh, and he even has a green hat. This is... It's totally... Absurd. Yeah, because I have a scar from many years ago and it's never gone away on my foot. I'm just saying, if it's a really bad scar, it will not leave. It's not going to take, like, 20 years or something to go away. There's no way it would go away. In 13 years, it would still be there. Wow. Mr. Rias? How do you spell his name again? R-E... R-E-U-S. Alright, so, Mr. Rias alive. So he killed some, probably, person he hired to be a stand-in. Yep, just to get Trucy on murder charge to get her back. I told you people age. He doesn't look anything like he did when he was like in his twenties. Yeah, and the guy he hired looked just like the like he was thirteen years ago. Mm. He That's found like a... So he killed some unnamed actor then. Mm. Oh ho, yeah. how ironic, wouldn't you say? That this odious mark carved into me by troop grammary would bring me back to the limelight once more. Strange are the comic threads before me. If the witness is the real Mr. Rius, then who was the victim who perished in the magic show? He was but a fan. I met him one on one of my programs several years ago. He said he had become a magician out of admiration for the great Mr. Rius. In confidence, I told him my true identity and let him take on my mantle. Yeah, right. And when you did this, man, and when did this man take over for you? About two years ago, I taught him my tricks and even acted as his producer. And so a mere amateur became a popular magician overnight. Curiosity of my magic on the stage we call television. I hope you enjoyed the show. Not really, because somebody died on it, Jerry. You really had us all fooled. I didn't enjoy it. Mr. Re Ratings, or should I say, Mr. Rius. In your hatred of true grammar, you killed the victim, Mr. Mr. Mystery. Yeah. And then set up Miss Wright to take the fall, didn't you? You did it all just to tarnish the grammary name. Exactly. Oh, I have no idea what you're talking about, lad. I set up the prank, that much is true. But this was uh, simply a harmless joke on Trucy, I assure you. Yet she learned of the plan and made use of it to commit murder. What? That is how strongly the criminal element runs in the blood of these grammaries. Objection. What the... But if it was a secret prank plan that very few people knew about, couldn't you have been the one to use it for murder instead? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yikes! Eek! His head! <laughs> Just kidding. What the heck was that? Heed my words, lawyer lad, for I fear your grasp on reality is sleepy. I do believe I told you that my magic is real. It employs neither tricks nor gimmicks. And now for the ambu... ambu... Ambiguity. Ambiguity! Darn it! Ambiguity... Fuck! Um, enough with the... Enough with the shenanigans! Yeah, exactly. Why don't you make your point already? Your, my alibi is as pristine as ever. Wouldn't you agree, prosecutor? Yes, I suppose that is correct. The witness does have a solid alibi. What is it? What? Recall defense that at the time of the magic show, Mr. Ratings was at Take Two TV. A fact that many people can easily attest to. No, that's right. I forgot all about that. 
take two TVs. Oh, ho, ho. so what do you think, Your Honor? Would you like me to testify on the matter? Yes, I think you'd better. I would think you better. Please tell the court more about your alibi. How do we know he didn't hire someone else to pretend to be him? Very well, then I... On with the show. Are you watching Magnific Grammarie? The time has finally come for my magic to snuff out your precious pedigree. Then Grammarie line will be no more. He's got problems. Um, dude, the fact you just proved that you have something against the Grammarie as you keep saying it. I was at the TV station at the time of the Penrose performance. I was busy working on another TV program. I could not spare no time for the magic show. Do I ask my staff if you doubt my... Do ask my staff if you doubt my claim. And there it is. A simple and perfect alibi. No tricks, no gimmicks. Just the truth. So I made the grammaries British, so I made him Spanish. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I uh, mean, that, that works for me. I like your cute Spanish accent. Do you understand now, perhaps? I did not grace the theater with my presence until after the incident. So now, how could I have committed the murder? Hmm, his staff did say he was there at the station. So it sure does sound like a rock solid alibi. But that can't be right! If Mr. Ratings is the killer, he'd have to have been at the theater, right? There's got to be a hole somewhere in his story. He did leave for the theater, though, remember? I think. I hey, I assure you, there are no holes on Mr. Rios' stage. No tricks, no gimmicks. True magic doesn't need trap doors to escape thorough. Yes, it does. Do enjoy my show to the fullest in my real alibi. But everything has a trick to it. Cross examination. All right, 132. Um, this is perfect alibi. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hi. After this, you can go out and get food if you want. Alright, but I'll have to clear the door. I was at the TV station at the time of the Penrose performance. Yes, you were at the time of the Penrose performance. But you did come to the theater eventually, isn't that right? Indeed. Anxious to see how the show was progressing, I made my way to the theater. Let's see, my journey took about ten minutes by car. Could he actually have been at the theater during those 10 minutes killing the victim? Oh, allow me to stab at the read in your mind. Aha, could I have been at the theater during those 10 minutes killing the victim? How in the... But no, I took a taxi. The driver can attest to that. Feel free to call the taxi company if my word does not satisfy you. Wow. The driver is a big fan of ratings Raja. I even gave him my card. He gave the driver his card. Oh! In the card trick sequence, you see Rating Raja's business card. I remember when, when we were seeing cards fly, his card appears. His oh card is gosh. there. At least I thought I saw I it. I think you're right, Luke. He gave the driver his card. That was very clever of him. You might as well give it up, lad. Questioning real magic is a fool's errand. Besides, you know very well what I was doing at the time of the incident. Actually, I have no idea what you're doing. I was busy working on another television program. I couldn't spare the time for the magic show. Hold it! What was the other TV show you were working on? My own special project, you see. Ah, one moment. Perhaps this is more appropriate. It's Rating Raja special production, yeah? Hang loose, baby! It's called Desperation Re Regeneration. He switched personas just to say that? What's the show about? Washed up has been singers and comedians get together to play musical chairs. The winner of the game is given a second chance at their career. Oh my god. Priceless prize for chumps who washed up too early in life. Sounds great, right? Yes. Might I suggest you appear on that show, Mr. Justice? As the ex-lawyer who used to make ridiculous bluffs in court and faded sadly into obscurity. Wow. And I let the ratings Raja produce my TV debut? Not in this lifetime. You have great reactions, Apollo. Who knows? T 
TV might be your true calling. Hey, whose side are you on? In any case, I was overseeing production of this TV program during the Penrose performance. Do ask my staff if you doubt my claim. Mm. How do we know those staff members aren't in cahoots with you? I make it my business to perform solo. My magic has neither need nor want of assistance. After all, one of them could reveal the secrets behind my magic, could they not? So he doesn't trust anybody, huh? He's the complete opposite of Trucy. There were many people there in the studio audience who saw the witness as well. Even if it had been able to persuade his own staff to cover for him, he could not have convinced so many complete strangers to do the same. It could have been the... It could have been the guy who was killed could have shown up in the taxi and then driven there during this performance and then gotten himself uh, killed. How would that work? Well, like, he would have pretended to be at the studio, then he would have taken the taxi, then he would have been there halfway through the performance, then he would have gone backstage, then he would have made the video, and everyone would have seen him go back there, then he would have gotten into his costume, then he would have gotten himself killed. Wow. Oh. Okay, that's pretty interesting. I don't know. He really has made a rock solid alibi for himself, huh? Yeah, it's almost too good, you know. It's eerie how perfect it is. Has all been revealed to you now? No. And there it is. Simple and perfect alibi. No tricks, no gimmicks. Just the truth. Hold it. I've got it. Do you have a brother? A brother that looks exactly like you, maybe. <laughs> Again with the twins business. Mm. You think the audience will let you get away with using the same gimmick twice in a row? If you do not believe in defense, why not investigate for yourself? Though I'm sure your efforts will prove to be thoroughly fruitless. Yeah, I guess the twins theory is a little far-fetched. Even though it was It worked thing last, that time, last yeah. time, yeah. Ah, his alibi really is airtight. I believe we've had enough. Well, while I believe the witness does indeed harbor some ill will against the defendant, there is no reason to doubt that he was at the TV station at the time of the incident. Yes, the facts prove it was impossible for the witness to have been involved with this crime. Nya, 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 nya. These last rites for the victim have dragged on long enough. The soul of the victim himself is so bored that it is resting on the top of our honor's head. It is? The time has come. Let us punish the sinner and guide the victim's soul to the Twilight Realm. Apollo! Trucy will be thrown in prison! And we'll be out of a job! But if you catch tasty fishies, will you sell me some at a good price? Uh... I told you, I have absolutely zero intention of going off on a tuna boat. Oh. Think justice. You have to figure this out. It's no use. I can't find a single flaw. So what now? Ho ho. Behold my never-ending magic show. Come for the awe-aspiring showmanship of the great Mr. Rius. And stay off my grand illusion until the end of time. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wait, is he saying that we're still trapped in some sort of illusion of his? That's what professional magicians do, Apollo. They make their audience see something that really isn't there. In other words, you make us see illusions, right? We call it misdirection. While we keep you busy believing one thing, we're busy making something else happen. What we say is there really isn't, and what we say isn't there actually is. That's so confusing. Huh. Could it be? You know what, Mr. Ratings? I guess we have all been spectators to the elaborate illusion you prepared for us. An illusion that has subtly turned, subtly turned our attention towards something you wanted us to see. What are you going on about, lad? Have you got something, Apollo? 
I just remembered something Trucy said about misdirection. What a magician says is there real. Wow. What a magician just says is there really isn't. What a magician says is there really isn't, and what they say isn't there actually is. What? Whoa, that's really complex, Apollo. If we've all been taken for a ride by Mr. Rating's magic, then maybe he's made us to see something that wasn't really there. It's time to rethink all my assumptions about this case. What have we been made to believe was there when it actually wasn't? What have we taken to be absolute facts of this case? I feel like they should put more commas in the dialogue so we can read it better. Hmm. I don't think the localization team did a very good job, to be honest. Yeah. What we believe is there, comma, really isn't. And then what we believe isn't there, comma, really is. Like, I would have put more commas in there so that you could actually tell when to pause. That's I remember the personal. original game not being as, like, tongue-tied as this. Like, I felt like they did a better job. Like, it's like when they incorporated new text and stuff they, into it. They could have said that in a better way. Like, what we think is there really isn't, and what is there really it. Oh, actually, that it really is hard to say. If I uh -huh. reevaluate the validil... Va Va validity. Darn it! If I reevaluate, reevaluate the validity of all these things, then just maybe. It's so hard to say words right when you're doing character voices. I know. I can't say it in an accent either, Luke. Athena, there's something uncanny about this case. Okay, what is it, Apollo? Ratings alibi. It's too perfect. That's true. It's like it's impossible to break, no matter how hard we try. But maybe that's the trick. Maybe that's exactly what it wants us to think. I'm not following, Apollo. We're not making any headway here because we've been so focused on breaking his alibi. Oh, I think I get it. What you're saying is he's using misdirection on us, right? It's definitely a possibility. <clears throat> Would the defense care to share with everyone? The rest of the class is waiting. What are you discussing over there? Your Honor, we believe that if we were to reconsider a certain assumption, we may finally arrive at the truth. In fact, I think we'll even finally see who's hiding behind the curtain, so to speak. Hmm, and how is this certain assumption you're thinking of? This is the only key assumption we've been taking for granted this whole time. I don't know. What do you think, Amps? Um, I mean... The Guilt? The crime scene? Culprit crime scene. Well, the only thing I can think of is that he could have possibly killed him without being there. What if he hit a switch from the TV office? He hit a have... switch from the TV office? Like, what if he turned something on or off from the TV office to kill the guy? Or, like, I don't know, like... What if he somehow did it from far away? Hmm. All right. Culprit was on the scene. Yeah, like maybe he wasn't even there. Maybe he was in. A, maybe he did kill him from the TV office. All right, here we go. I don't know. What if the culprit was somewhere other than the theater at the time of the crime? What if there was some way to commit the murder without actually being there? If that were the case, then Mr. Rating's perfect alibi would become irrelevant. Objection. How could one person stab another to death with a sword without physically being there? Furthermore, we all saw what appears to be a culprit's shadow in the background. Objection. But couldn't we just easily assume that the shadow does not belong to the culprit? Well, if it's not the culprit, then who is it? I'm not 100% sure yet, but I'm pretty sure I'm on the right track. We've all seen something that looks like the shadowy shape before you, Your Honor. However, the magic show itself... In that case, please point to it in the show footage for us. This is a thing that looks suspiciously similar to the shadow figure of the culprit. Mr. Hats! Yeah, it does look like a hat. Maybe he controlled Mr. Hat with a robot or something. I don't know. Maybe he controlled it like a puppet with strings. I have no idea. 
What represents the shadowy thing, Mr. Hat? I think it'd be this. Take that! Yeah. Mm, Mr. Justice, how does that even remotely resemble the shadowy figure? What do you mean, George? I thought it looked perfectly similar. Do you not think so? No. Not in the slightest. Hmm. Huh. That's funny. It looked pretty shady to me. Ha <laughs> Wait. And your logic is shadier. Maybe there's a time where Mr. Hat appears like a shadow. Maybe I should try slowing the video down and taking a better look. It is Mr. Hat, though. I know it is. Maybe he, maybe he makes the same pose as that shadow or something. Let's see. We'll just keep watching to then and see. Oh, wait, great, the guy's focused on that person. No, this is actually how it's supposed to happen. She's talking to the audience. It's Mr. Hat. There! There! Take that. There! Doesn't the shadow resemble the suspicious shadowy figure? Mm, now that you mention it, it does, doesn't it? Mr. Wright, I mean, darn it! Uh, Trucy, could you identify the shadow for the court? Let's see. I believe that's Mr. Hat's shadow. It's from when he's being pulled up from the stage to the catwalk overhead by a wire. Then could the shadow that's shown later in the same footage also be Mr. Hat? No, that's not possible. After Mr. Hat was pulled to the catwalk, he stayed up there. In other words, the second shadow is from some other figure being pulled up. Some other figure? I'm afraid you'll need to be more specific than that, Mr. Justice. He's right. We've come this far. I'll just have to figure it out from the clues I have on hand. What is the second shadow shown in the footage? What is the second okay. shadow from shown in the footage? Well, didn't they say like that? What was their original trick supposed to be? Like that their prank? I thought their prank said they were gonna, like, I thought they said their prank they were gonna pull him up after they after he pretended to be dead or something, and then she was gonna see him rise Wait, up. Wait, wasn't the dummy holding the real sword? I have no idea. But how could the dummy... The dummy had to stab Mr... Fake Mystery. Yeah. What if... What if the other guy would... Wait, how do I... Or they could have pulled a, a person up. They could have pulled... One sec, one sec. Autopsy. Either it's Bonnie. Mr. Hat being pulled up, or it could have been a human being being pulled up. Like, at a pulley. The fire trick... Mr. Rias transforms into a dragon, Trucy's hat trick, Bonnie's teleportation trick, and Trucy's escape, Mr. Rios' fire trick. This will be dangerous. Make sure to have the fire bug. Doesn't say anything about him being... What about the What about the script for the prank show? Prank oh, show. they don't have one. Show oh, script. Yeah. What does a show script say? What's a prank script. Mysterious body will appear in the supposedly empty coffin, which would cause a big ruckus. After capturing a bit of Trucy's reaction on film, Mr. Rios will come back to life, laughing and flying up into the air, causing another round of surprise. Flying? How would he fly up into the air? If we consider what was happening on the stage at the time, there's only one answer. Prank script. So... What? This if so... if the dummy, this is my theory. If the dummy was up on the catwalk, and the sword was up, then when the other guy was pulled up in the air to finish his prank, he would be impaled by the sword. It's possible. Yeah, you're right, Luke. 
That's a and really... then all they would have to do is pull the body abruptly off and stick it like, um, you know, uh, stick it behind the curtain. So that means he was actually still alive on the stage when people were running away. So he was alive... Until until the dragon fell down. And it was like down. fake blood on him, and then it was really... This really reminds me of a Mr. Monk episode where the guy... It appeared the guy died, and then they were like, someone call the doctor, and then the person who called the doctor, who said he was helping him, actually then stabbed him, and mm. then he died. Yeah. But everyone thought it was the first person who, like... Yeah, this is really interesting. All right, here we go. Okay. If we consider what was happening on the stage at the time, there's only one answer. Oh, my gosh. The shadow belonged to the fake mystery. In other words, Mr. Man of Mystery. Man of Mystery. Oh. The victim? Please take a look at the prank plan script. Mr. Mystery was to pretend to be dead and then fly up into the air after that. Isn't that right, Mr. Ratings? Indeed. And what of it? I contend that's exactly what happened. What? The victim was wearing a stunt harness around his waist. <gasps> oh my gosh, he was. It was most likely attached to the stunt wire so he could be pulled up into the air. Wow. So you're suggesting that after pretending to be dead in the coffin, the victim flew into the air just as the prank script says? Exactly. We just couldn't see him go flying up because the dragon was blocking our view. And that last trick, ladies and gentlemen, is the true piece of the de resistance of the culprit's murderous magic show. What? Ugh. Don't tell me you've got it all figured out, Apollo! Yeah, I think so. <gasps> if we can just look beyond Mr. Rating's last bit of misdirection, we should directly be able to see the real truth. Oh, wow. The victim must have been pulled up to the catwalk just like Mr. Hat. And hit the cushioning up there with a considerable force. I just have to figure out what else happened up there at the time. Oh my gosh. Got impaled. Yeah, maybe there was a sword stabbing down or something. It'd be stabbing up. Oh, wow. Because it would be hard for the dummy to be, like, hoisted up and the... Uh, oh, wait. Yeah. The, the dummy would have the sword, like, piercing up somehow. Wow. Disturbing. Or they changed it so the dummy would have the sword up. Are you ready to elaborate, Mr. Justice? Yes, Your Honor. I'm ready. In that case, please answer to me this. Why did the culprit make the victim fly up into the air like that? To, to kill him. Just why did the culprit have the victim fly up after he appeared in the coffin? And how did the victim actually die when he was only pretending to be dead in the coffin? If we can figure out how these two questions relate, the answer should become clear. Could it be? <gasps> Mr. Mystery must have thought he was still just part of the prank when he appeared on stage. He probably didn't suspect a thing as he was being pulled into the air. After Miss Wright was called backstage, and just as the set piece fell... But the culprit had already planted the real murder weapon in the cushion in the catwalk. Oh, oh! Disturbing! It was probably a knife or a blade of some sort. What? You mean... Yeah, it was really a magical murder. Just as the prank script said, Mr. Mystery was whisked up into the air. Oh, wow. And straight into the blade there in the catwalk. Ouch. Disturbing. So he set basically a death trap. Yep. Oh, disturbing. In other words, this murder was committed remotely through the use of a magic trick. What? Remotely? Using this method, it doesn't matter where Mr. Ratings was at the time of death. No. No, 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 no. Oh, he's sweating now. Yeah, but you can't see it because of his cape. Yeah. Well, how exactly does it work, Mr. Justice? Just before the murder occurred...
The dragon set piece was up in the catwalk. It and Mr. Man of Mystery... <laughs> Mystery. Uh, we're connected to each other by a wire at the time. Oh my gosh. By carrying out the prank plan, Betty made the dragon set piece fall. So Betty killed. Which caused Mr. Mystery to rocket straight up. Into the blade and the cushion. Ooh. So in reality, if Betty knew that was going to happen, then she killed him. The cushion was high up enough to be hidden from the audience's view. She had no idea. That's why nobody saw the blade. Oh. So that guy set it up. Yeah. Oh, then that big miss... Big gash in Mr. Hat's cape! The blade must have been set up overhead sometime before the magic show. Mr. Hat must have been slashed by it, too, when he was pulled up to the cushion. Oh, wow. I didn't even see... I don't remember that. I can't believe it. I had no idea. That's Betty. I... I can't believe it. I had no idea. I was told that Trucy would freak out if I made the set piece fall. That's the only reason I even did it. You were used, Betty. Roger Ratings used you. I, I, I thought he was my little puppet to boss around, but it was the other way around. After the incident occurred, Mr. Ratings arrived at the theater. He got the murder weapon and swapped the rubber sword with the bloodied steel one. That's also when he lowered the victim's body down to the stage. But how did he have time to do all that, Apollo? When the set piece fell, the audience was evacuated from the building. He was able to do all these things after the fact because he was the only one around to see. A horrific murder camouflage by a spectacular magic show. Spectacular! It sounds like the kind of murder only a magician could pull off. As long as the show proceeded as it was scripted, Mr. Mystery was doomed to die. That's why it was you, Mr. Ratings, who killed the victim all the way from the TV station. <gasps> This prank plan, or should I say murder plan, proves your murderous intent. Oh my gosh. Wow. Gah! Grammarees! Whoa. This is crazy. Uh... Wow. Okay, yeah. one sec. Well, he has something to say there. Uh, is he still going to somehow blame Trucy? Mm. I don't know. Uh, he used Man of Mystery as fan. What a sicko, says Don. Yep. The fact that guy was a fan of his and he just used him to kill him. Yeah, that's disturbing. All right. Enough. You dim-witted, ignorant, imbecilic, putrid red pepper! Ah, uh, he can't possibly have a counter-argument to make. Talk about not knowing when to let it go and move on! Um, do you have a rebuttal or something, Prosecutor Sadie? No blade of any kind was found in the catwalk, which means you have no evidence to support your theory. But Mr. Ratings retrieved it after the fact! Which still leaves you with no way to prove your wildly fantastic remote murder theory. But, without proof, does it not make more sense to believe that the murder was committed there on the stage? That's where the bloodied stained sword was found, after all. Mm, that is a very good point. As the only person who could have committed the crime here on that stage... Trucy Wright remains the prime suspect. Nyah. Nyah, 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 nyah. It's impossible. It would appear that you would call this truth as little more than a cheap parlor trick. In the end, you have done nothing to prove the accused's innocence. It is time at last to let go and move on. Um, no. Oh, ho ho! Are you seeing this magnificramery? My magic is exacting punishment on your granddaughter. The Grammarie name is done for. Apollo, 
We need to hit them with a decisive piece of evidence right here. I know. That's just what I was thinking. Mr. Justice, do you or don't you have anything? To prove that the witness committed this remote murder you proposed. Of course I do, Your Honor. Um, this entire incident was carried out exactly according to the script, Apollo. Right, so theoretically, there should be no evidence for us... There should be no evidence for us to find or use. Which means our best bet is to see if something unscripted happened. There's got to be something ratings couldn't have foreseen. And once I find it, that's how I'll expose his murderous trick. Oh. Get ready, Mr. Ratings, because I'm about to reveal the secret to your magic. There are no tricks or gimmicks here, just some good old-fashioned logic. So if anyone made a mistake on the oh, show... Oh, here we go. Finale time. Finale time? Okay. As long as the magic show went as scripted, the murder would happen without fail. Everything in this case was carefully planned so that no evidence would be left behind. Still, one thing happened that definitely wasn't in the plan. What part of the magic show was part of the show's original script? Um... Well, the set piece was going to fall because that was part of the prank. Madam Mystery was supposed to pretend to die, but Bonnie wasn't supposed to make a mistake. What was part of the magic show that wasn't part of the original script? Bonnie's mistake. Yeah, she wasn't supposed to... She did the wrong side or something like that. Bonnie made a mistake. Bonnie made a mistake during Trucy's escape trick. What mistake did Bonnie make during the magic trick? Her Mr. Life, Hat's positioning. Her life choices. <laughs> life choices. Oh my god. The positioning of Mr. Hat. Yep. Mr. Hat was placed in the wrong spot. Because Bonnie placed Mr. Hat in the right of the coffin instead of the left, Trucy had to reappear on the left. Ah. Trucy had to reappear. Meh. Trucy had to reappear. 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 Trucy had to reappear on the side of the coffin opposite to the one in the show script. But the culprit didn't know that when he first arrived at the theater, which means he was bound to make a slip up when he tampered with the crime scene. Which part of the culprit's cover-up attempt was affected by Trucy's new position? The edited show footage. Um. I think. The blood? Why are you what? guys saying the blood in the coffin? Blood in the coffin hole? I don't even remember that being part of the thing. Why are you guys um, saying language? I didn't swear. Yeah, we haven't... We... Luke hasn't sworn at all. I don't know what you guys are talking about. I've been here the whole time. The blood was on the wrong side of the coffin, too. Thinking Trucy had appeared on the left, and the culprit must have put the blood in the left hole. Oh! We didn't even notice that! But the blood was eventually discovered in the right hole during the police investigation. I forgot to look at that. If the killer had originally put the blood on the left side, that means he must have tampered with the scene again afterwards to make it line up with the facts. Oh, wow. To make the crime scene consistent with the facts, the culprit must have... Uh... He must have taken one side of the coffin and swapped it with the other side to make the blood appear swap correctly. Swap the coffin sides? I would have done that if I was a killer. Okay. I don't know. How would you even swap the sides? I guess you could... The culprit swapped the coffin sides. That's right. The left and right panels of the coffin are interchangeable. The culprit must have switched the two panels to make the blood stain fit the facts. But the switch might have also given rise to something unnatural. Oh, I remember now. There was something unnatural about the coffin and it's just the evidence I need. Wow, Apollo. Sorry, Mr. Ratings, but I have some very conclusive proof of your guilt. Another bluff, is it? There's no way you could have anything of the kind. My magic is real. No tree. Yeah. I wouldn't say that. No, there are tricks and gimmicks to it. Just like any other illusion. What? 
after the murder. You switched the left and right panels of the coffin, didn't you? Yeah. And because you did, you left behind something very unnatural for us to find. This proves that Roger Ratings tampered with the crime scene after the murder took place. Maybe he left his fingerprints or something. I don't know. Something on the coffin, blood, a mark, something. Okay. If he left a mark, be the fingerprints result. Wait. Was it really the fingerprints? It doesn't say Mr. Rating's fingerprints were found on the coffin. Uh, I, I mean, I would guess that would be it. Um, yeah, I don't know. The fingerprint results? What about the fingerprints is unnatural? Let's take a close look at the prints the victim left inside the coffin, shall we? The victim was facing forward in the coffin. His print should have looked like this. However, what we found was oh, they were facing the opposite direction. Like he was facing backwards. It's quite unnatural for the prince to be facing this way, wouldn't you agree? Wow. Ah! This is strange, isn't it? How did they get this way? They got this way because the culprit thought the magic show had gone according to script. The culprit thought Mr. Hat would be on the left side of the coffin. And that Miss Wright would also pop up to the left of the coffin as per the show's script. He then assumed she had thrust the sword into the hole on the left side of the coffin. That's why he put blood in the left hole when he was trying to cover up his crime. But sometime after leaving the blood stain, the culprit must have realized his mistake. He found out that due to Bonnie's mistake, Mr. Hat was to the right of the coffin. And that despite the script, Miss Wright had thrust the sword into the hole on the right. In short, the hole with the blood stain in it was on the left side, the opposite side that Trucy used. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh. To make the blood's location fit the facts, he had to tamper with the evidence yet again. So he tried to cover his tracks by switching the coffin's left and right panels. Oh, and that's how the fingerprint of the coffin ended up backwatch. Wow. Because the culprit switched the two side panels around, the prince ended up facing the opposite direction. But strange. instead of going to all that trouble with the panels, why didn't the culprit just wipe the sword away and redo it on the other side? Thank you very much for the gifted membership, Isaiah. Thank you, Isaiah. I'm afraid that wouldn't have worked, Your Honor, because of a little something called the luminal testing. Right, luminal. I almost forgot. Luminal can detect trace amounts of blood even if it's been wiped away, right? That's right. Wiping the blood away would have only served as proof of his meddling. How about it, Mr. Ratings? Did a pretty good job of figuring out your trick, didn't I? Objection. Trucy Wright could have done the same just as easily. You have no proof that it was the witness who tampered with the evidence. Objection. Ah, but I do have proof. What? A person who was in the magic show would never have made the mistake of putting the blood on the wrong side. Least of all, Miss Wright, who surely would have remembered she was on the other side. Oh my, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Why, you impudent. I'm sure you've realized by now, Prosecutor Sadman, that your claim that Miss Wright is a culprit just doesn't hold up. Pfft. You and the accused are most certainly bound to... Objection! Really? Miss Wright and I? Because I think you're the one who'd stick it they were trying to convict an innocent girl of. Exactly. Oh, wow. Prosecutor Sadman, are you alright? 
As for the true culprit, he is someone who knew how the show was supposed to go but didn't actually see it. And someone who had the chance to tamper with the crime scene after the incident. And the only person who fits the bill... ...is you, Roger Ratings! Wow. Grandma Ree! All the secrets for your tricks have been revealed. And with no tricks left, I'm afraid your show has been cancelled! Permanently! Yeah! All of my secrets have been revealed, you say? Huh. Uh oh, I don't know what's happening now. Don't make me laugh, boy. Mine is the true real magic. There are no secrets to reveal. Behold, ladies and gentlemen, the true power of the great Mysterious. Witness a magic far greater than troop grammaries. Burn! Crumble! Fall to my furious flames! The great Mr. Rius will bring an end to you all. And now for the final heir to the Grammy name, right here, right now, to you. Shabba- What? No, this isn't right. Ah! No, I didn't do anything wrong. No, it is not my fault. I'm not the one to blame. I am the victim here. Ah! What? Ah! Ah! Stop, no! The ghost! Curse you, Grammarys! Oh my god. The ghost got him! Wow. So the, the fake man of mystery got him. Curse those Grammarys! It's all because of them, even now, they wound me. Curse them all to the abyss! Creepy. That was creepy. Do you really hate us that... M Wait, that's... that's. Hang on, that's not him. Um, I don't know who that is. That's probably Trucy. Oh, yeah, it probably is. Do not you really hate us all that much? True murder. I think that, like, little... I think that was the ghost yeah, of... Yeah, it uh, may have been the ghost of... Man of Mystery, killed. yeah. Yeah, and I'm sorry we missed your super chat before, Justo. We missed a super chat from him. He was mentioning. Okay. Um, thank you, guys. We got a super chat that said... Justo Kenobi? Yeah. We got to my free, knowledge, free they do not find out they are related. Okay. Okay, thank you, Justo, and thank you, Shadow Trooper, before for the highlighted message. Hi, Luke and Amber. Uh, I enjoy watching you both. Have you thought about playing Star Wars Galactic Battlegrounds? Yeah, we did that one. Oh, yeah. Thank you again, Isaiah and Justo Kenobi. And I guess Justo Kenobi just did a highlighted message that I okay. didn't miss. Uh, j uh, he just said, let me see if I can read it. Um... Uh... All right. To my knowledge, Trucy and Apollo never find out they're related, nor do they find out their mother is alive. Okay, thank you, Justo. You're breathtaking. Thank you so much. Okay, I'm ready to go. Sorry. Uh, it's kind of in the middle of the thing. That, yeah. Thank you, Justo. Really appreciate your super chat. And thank you so much for your generosity, Justo. Okay, you're lying thank again, you. sweetie. Do you really hate us all that much? Does your hatred run that deep? Deep enough to kill an innocent man? You're darn right. You have no idea what the humiliations I had to suffer. Your grandfather, Magnifi Grammary, kicked me out after I got hurt practicing my magic. He said I was too unskilled, that I would mess up on stage. He threw me out of the troop just because he was worried about his own reputation. Since I was but a child, it was always my dream to become a great magi magician. But that Magnify, he took it all down from me. But that's no excuse! That's no reason to do something so evil! Ma 
magic is supposed to make people happy, not used as a means for murder. What's the big deal? I just used what I had available to me, that's all. I get it now. That attitude towards magic is why my grandfather kicked you out. You! You don't deserve to call yourself a magician! Don't deserve? I don't know about that. After all, you were completely taken in by my magic, were you not? If not that lawyer over there, you would be on your way to prison as we speak. You're right. I didn't see through your tricks. You see? So in the end, Troop Grammary was defeated by the great Mr. Rias. Ho 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 ho! You're not fit to lecture me from on high, Trucy Wright. You don't even deserve to call yourself a magician, you naive greenhorn! <laughs> Piffed. Yeah, ha, 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 ha. Take that, Grammarie. You lose! <laughs> if anyone needs to learn to let go and move on, it's this guy. Yeah, ha, 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 ha. This court and my prison can both burn in flames of my creation. Yeah, ha, 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 ha. I mean, why doesn't he just disappear like Zach Ramry did? Yeah. Bailiff, take Mr. Ants away! And bring a fire extinguisher just to be safe! Yeah, like, if he was really good at magic, he would disappear. I mean, that's what Zach Ramry did. He disappeared. I guess they didn't want to do the same thing again. Looks like we've reached the end. I feel as though I've been watching a grand magic show. It was close, but we just barely made it through somehow. And we're not going to get sued! Huh? Why does Trucy look so down? Miss Wright? Yes, Your Honor? I'm about to announce my verdict. I can see that wondrous smile of yours, that smile of a true entertainer, as I do. Yes, Your Honor? That's a good girl. Now then, tis the court finds, this court finds the defendant Trucy Wright not guilty! Hmm. Hmm. Remember, in his country, lawyers and the accused both get executed. Yeah. What is a John? April 28th. District courtroom. Defendant lobby. Number, Number three. three. Everyone's like, yay, woohoo, we did it. Wow, that was a short chapter, actually. Oh, finally, Trucy is free. Free Dude. Trucy. Okay. Trucy not guilty. All right, moving on. Mission complete. Not yet. Thank you for everything, Polly. Oh, Trucy, grazie Dio. Now you can open your show tomorrow, just as planned, Trucy! Yep, and it's all thanks to you two! Yeah, but wait, how are you going to do that? Who's who's going to play the bad guy? Yeah. Oh, but now that Mr. Rias is gone, I'll need to find someone who's to replace him. Um, oh, no. <laughs> I don't like the way she's looking at me. I wouldn't do it. Uh, Trucy, I'm so sorry about everything. Hey, what are you apologizing for? Roger Raytons used us. We were victims too, you know. And she's British again. He even made me an accomplice to murder. You know what, Luke? I can't do it. But, Betty, we have to take some of the blame for this too, you know. Even if we didn't know he was planning to kill Mr. Mystery, we did cooperate with him after all. It's... It's my fault, isn't it? Neither one of you is to blame! The only one in the wrong is a person who used magic to 
commit murder. Roger ratings. Huh. Don't you think I know that? Say, what do you want? But don't think for a second that... That I still don't hate you. Wow, that's mean. I guess she really does hate me. But Betty, why? Used to be a huge fan of Trucy's. Hey, shut up! I've always hated her. Really? But if we hadn't seen Trucy's magic show, we would have never tried to become professional magic I mean magicians ourselves. Speak for yourself, buddy. But Betty, ah, shut up! Was she acting that way this whole time because she secretly loves Trucy? Uh... Wow, Trucy, I never knew that being the best could be so tough. Come on, Bonnie. We're leaving. We have to get ready for tomorrow's show. <laughs> You're really excited about performing with Trucy again, aren't you? That's not true, zip it, dummy! Um, I'm confused. Polly, do you think I really am a, a naive greenhorn? Huh? No way, she's not. After all, you were completely taken in by my magic, were you not? If not for that lawyer over there, you would be on your way to prison as we speak. You're right. I didn't see through your tricks. You see? So in the end, Troop Cranberry was defeated by the Mr. Great Mr. Rius. Me! Ho ho ho! You're not fit to lecture me from on high, Trucy Wright. You don't even deserve to call yourself a magician, you naive greenhorn! Trucy, don't tell me you're taking what uh, Rent said to heart. Ratings, darn it. Well, maybe a little, Apollo. I didn't see through his tricks. I let myself be taken in by his magic. I can't trust myself anymore. Maybe he was right to call me a greenhorn. You shouldn't take stock in the words, he said. He doesn't even know the first thing about you. Oh, Apollo! You're a wonderful grammar magician. You should be proud of yourself. Thank you, Apollo, but what makes you say that? I know you're a wonderful Grammy magician. I know you're a great magician because of this. Um. Probably the Grammy notebook was entrusted to her. Mm, yeah, probably, Luke. I think That's so. That's what I would say. She's the heir. Mm hmm. Take that! My grandfather's notebook? The Grammy Creed. A true entertainer always keeps a smile on their face. When you performed your magic trick in court today, you showed the world your dedication to your troop's creed. Even though all the jeering you kept a smile on your face and won the crowd over, you are everything Magnavi could have hoped for in an air. You're a great magi- You're a great magician, Trucy. A great magician? Me? You really are. That's why you don't have to worry about what Mr. Rating said. Oh, Polly, thank you. Still, I couldn't have had done it without you. I would have lost my nerve if I'd been alone up there. But I was able to keep on smiling because of you, Polly. Me? I remembered what you said to me in the detention center. After all, you're sure you swapped the swords, right? Yes. I remember doing it. Then I just know it wasn't your fault, Trucy. Huh? But, but, but how can you say that? We don't have any proof it wasn't me. I mean, I know you're a great lawyer, Polly, but... I believe in you, Trucy. And I believe in your skill as a professional magician. So I'm going to prove your innocence. Don't worry. You're going to be fine. Uh... Your words are what kept me going, Polly. Apollo, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Now I can be everything I was meant to be. Trucy's real smile is the best. I'm so glad I could help make that happen. She's happy. Uh, 
Um. What up, Emma? Uh, I'm really sorry, Trucy, for everything. But why? Uh, well, I wasn't able to convince Prosecutor Sadmad what a good person you are. And I had to testify against you, too. You had nothing to apologize for, Emma. You were just doing your job. You're, you're too kind, Trucy. Oh, I don't know about... Huh? Is something wrong, Emma? Oh! Prosecutor Sadman, what are you doing here? Hmm. Detective Sky. Y yes I require your forensic expertise in order to close this case. Come, let us go. Wait, Prosecutor! Hmm. The trial's over, Mr. Justice. You and I are strangers once more, with no further need to interact. Wow. Strangers, huh? Have you really forgotten all about me? What? You're really changed. Uh... <laughs> Nayuda? Nayuda. Telling me to let it go and stuff. What happened to you? Oh, loiter of impure soul. I have nothing to say to the likes of you. Are you serious? Now, if you'll excuse me. Hmm. There he goes. What was that all about, Apollo? Why? How do you know Prosecutor Saddy? Let's just say we're old acquaintances. Acquaintances? Seems like something more than that, Polly. Yeah, well... You don't like to talk about your past, do you? Because you always change the subject. Hmm. I, uh... I guess I'll have to talk about it someday. But for now... Come on, let's forget about the past and celebrate Trucy's future! Sure, if you say so, Apollo. Hey, it's Mr. Wright! Finally. Put him on speakerphone, Apollo! Oh, wow, he wasn't anywhere near us, so we had to take care of it ourselves. Yep. What's up, Mr. Wright? Apollo, how's Trucy? What happened? The trial. Uh, did you get a not guilty verdict? Mr. Wright, slow down. Everything's fine. Hi, Daddy! I'm okay now! She was found not guilty this very, in a very dramatic turnabout, Mr. Wright. Plus, we saved the office! It was a great victory for Apollo. Whew! That's a load off my mind. Can't thank you enough, Apollo. Now I know I can trust you to hold down the fort any time. Me? R really Yeah, you, kid. You're a real full-fledged lawyer now in my eyes. Full-fledged lawyer? I still can't wrap my mind around it. Thank goodness you were there to take care of everything. And thank you, Apollo. No, no, no. No need to go that far, boss. Especially not in front of everyone. Oh, and by the way, I won't be able to make it to tomorrow's show, so I was hoping you could go. You'll do it for me, won't you? Of course. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Full-fledged. So, Daddy... He asked you to come to tomorrow's show, huh, Apollo? As my assistant, right, Polly? No. Um, no, he just asked me to go cheer you on. Okay, but I'll be sure to save you the best seat in the house, Polly. The best seat in the house? I really appreciate the thought, but... Good, then it's settled! Huh? Oh, no. What's the best seat in the house? Oh, no. I don't want to know. April 29th, Penrose Theater. Stage. Objection! Got a bad feeling about that. I should have known! Oh my gosh! That this was what she meant! Oh my gosh. Magical girl Trizzy Wright will now perform her greatest illusion yet. There are no tricks or gimmicks here, ladies and gentlemen. This is real magic! Wait a minute, you're kidding, right? Th there is a trick or gimmick, right? I'm too young to die! Now then, Mr. Hat, 
You know what to do with that sword! No, 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 wait, stop, stop! No! <laughs> oh my gosh. And that is how Trissy and Gravity Land ended on a rousing high note with a big round of applause and Polly's ears splitting screams. What kind of ending is that? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh the end we never figure out if Apollo got stabbed at the end of the game or not nope <laughs> that's funny yep so that was magical turnabout that was the whole case that was really short mm, wow alright guys and gals so if you want more Ace Attorney to continue tomorrow starting our third chapter um, then this video has to get a thousand views. For whatever reason, um, Apollo Justice Ace Attorney only got 630. Um, that's the best we could do after two hours and 30 minutes, so good oh, luck, wow. guys. You, yeah, we usually stop around 700-something, but YouTube just wasn't having it. And uh, no interference from the would-be uh, hooligans, either. And still the stream did badly. So that sucks. But thank you guys so much for the super chats. Um, we hope you guys had fun, you were entertained. And if you want another exciting episode, 700, 800, 900, 1,000, 400 views by tomorrow morning. If not, we'll have another game to show you guys in its stead uh, for the 4 o'clock time slot. But um, good luck, everybody, and hopefully you guys are able to get another episode of Ace Attorney. Final Fantasy is running late. Final Fantasy will be up in a little bit, so please look forward to that. And we'll see you guys on the next live stream. Until then, God bless and happy gaming. Thanks so much for watching. See ya!